Hello and welcome to this video on digital note taking. Today, I will be sharing some strategies and techniques for digital note taking as an engineering or STEM student, specifically using Microsoft OneNote. There are many videos here on YouTube detailing note taking with OneNote, but I have found that most of these videos explore strategies that are more conducive to the medical or business fields. So, like the engineer I am, I have established this problem and set about to create this video to expand upon the content available for engineering students when it comes to successful digital note taking. I have iterated upon the following techniques as an engineering student for the past three years, and I am excited to share some of what I have learned to help you expand your digital note taking toolbox. This video comes to you in four parts, useful tools, notebook structure, note taking strategies, and helpful features. While there are many tutorials on YouTube that go into great detail about the features I will be sharing with you today, in this video I aim to provide you with some insight as to how to wield these tools specifically as an engineer. Let's start off with the basics, the tools we need to make this happen. I personally prefer to use my iPad Pro and Apple Pencil whenever I take notes in class. It's lightweight, handles handwriting wonderfully, and is much more expressive than simply typing notes, plus it's paperless. I have found that typing my notes as an engineering major simply does not work for me. This is especially true in math classes where it is much easier to write out integrals and other equations as the professor works through the problems rather than fight with words equations or lug around several pounds of physical notebooks. Additionally, engineering is a very visual subject, whether that be in the form of graphs, diagrams, or models. If you leave out this aspect of note taking, these notes just fall flat. As such, the iPad Pro really is a great way to capture these handwritten notes. In addition to my iPad, the cloud syncing capabilities of OneNote make it so that I can sync my notes across all my devices. I use my laptop to view, edit, and organize my notes outside of lecture. Accessing my notes on my laptop is a really powerful study tool, and I'll dive deeper into some of those features in a little bit. I'll make the note here that when working on my laptop, I do prefer to use OneNote 2016, as it has some features that are not included in the most recent version of OneNote, but both are very powerful and you can access your notebooks on both versions simultaneously. I'll address some of these differences throughout the video. The first step in setting up successful digital notes is establishing your personal organization style and preferences. In this video, I'll demonstrate the notebook structure and organization that I have found works best for me, but this is in no way a one-size-fits-all situation. I've iterated upon this structure for three years to suit my personal needs, and I encourage you to jump in and choose a structure, but also to not be afraid to change things as you find better solutions. To begin with, I have a separate notebook for every course I take each semester. Personally, I like seeing all my classes here on the side and clicking in to see the sections for one course at a time. OneNote has this section group feature that allows you to put sections together, but I personally don't love the way this looks on OneNote 2016. In this older version, it puts the section groups here at the top and requires an extra click through to access the sections within it. Once you're in the section group, you have to click back out before you can see any other sections, so this really just doesn't work for me during the semester. I will point out that I do use the section group feature at the end of each semester, at which point I combine all of my course notebooks into a semester notebook. During the semester, I'm using these notebooks so much that it is easier for me to have separate notebooks rather than clicking through to each section group, but also, once the semester is over, I like to keep these notebooks open so that I can refer back to them. Instead of keeping dozens of course notebooks open, I just make these semester notebooks with section groups for each class. So far, the six semester notebooks that I do have are much more manageable than the 30 plus individual notebooks I would have if I left them in their own notebooks. The next step is setting up different sections in each notebook. For each class, I typically set up a general section where I save all of the beginning of the semester items, such as the course syllabus, textbook access, office hours, and contact information for my professors and TAs. From there, I create a lecture section where I keep all my notes, homework, and quizzes. I personally keep all the information for one exam within one lecture section. Then, once we have had the exam, I start up a new section to keep the new notes together. Most of my professors structure tests around only the most recent lectures, and this structure helps me know exactly what will be on the exam. 
Most of my engineering courses also have a lab section, either integrated in the course or as a separate class. As such, I make a separate lab section in my notebook to keep track of all of the content from lab, rather than making a whole new notebook. Occasionally, I will just integrate lab into the lecture sections if the lab progresses at the same pace as lecture, but that's almost never the case. The final tool you have in notebook structuring is making the pages within each section. Depending on the structure of the course, I will make a top-level page with the unit name, then indent any lecture pages beneath that. Sometimes we will have multiple units in one exam, so it is helpful to keep track of which lectures belong to which unit. In class, I will either make pages for one topic or one day, depending on the way the professor has structured the class. Some of my professors have been very transparent with the organization of each topic, and if we move on to a new big idea in the middle of lecture, I'll just make a new page. Other professors have a more fluid style, and sometimes I can see when they are changing topics, but most of the time I just make a page per day and keep track of topic headings within the page. After class, I always go back and title the pages with important topics of that lecture for easy access when I come back to study. I almost never include the date in my page titles because OneNote saves the date you created the page right at the top, and I always make my pages at the start of lecture. This gives me more room in the page title to include important topics rather than taking up space with the date information. As far as page content goes, I put everything in my notebooks. I especially love OneNote's ability to include printouts of PDFs, PowerPoints, and Word docs. Some of my professors provide their PowerPoints to us before class, and in these instances, I make sure to print them to OneNote, which then allows me to annotate on top of them during lecture. Having the PowerPoint makes it so that I don't have to take up time redrawing graphs and diagrams, and I can instead focus my attention on the finer details and comments my professors make. It's also great because I don't have to use up so much paper printing out hundreds of slides worth of PowerPoints. I encourage you to play around with the structure of your notebooks, sections, and pages to find the setup that works best for you. When it comes to note-taking strategies as an engineering student, I like to break it down into three sections, lecture, studying, and lab. First, some tips for facilitating successful lecture sections. As I mentioned previously, I prefer to use my iPad for note-taking during class. It enables me to write out my notes in real time, drawing any important graphs or schematics as we go. Before class, I always check my professor's online sites for any new PDFs or PowerPoints we will be using that day in lecture. I'll then use the Print to OneNote feature to insert these documents as a printout on a page, that way I can annotate over them during lecture. As I mentioned previously, this saves a lot of time during class by not having to redraw everything. In this way, I can focus on what the professor is saying that may not have been explicitly written down in the slides. If the professor doesn't provide notes beforehand, I'll just go ahead and make a new page in class, I like the graph paper option, and go from there. When taking notes in class, I find it important to establish a key for your highlighting and colored pens, if that's what you like to use. For example, I have developed a color coding strategy that cues my brain to recognize certain types of information. For topic headers, I use a thicker pen than what I write my regular notes with, that way it stands out on the page. I have chosen a pink highlighter to signify important equations. This one is super relevant as an engineering major because we have so many equations to keep track of. I highlight vocabulary in this green color and reserve the yellow color for very important concepts and phrases. Occasionally, I'll use this blue color for headers as well. Most importantly, don't underestimate the power of the red pen. When we get to a point in lecture that the professor is heavily emphasizing, or when the professor describes a concept in a way that clicks for me, I make sure to switch to a red pen. This really helps call attention to the most important concepts when I'm going back through my notes. I also use several of the colored pens during lecture for signifying different curves on a graph or marking different diagram flows. Be sure to add the pens you use most often to your toolbar up here so that you can switch between the different colors quickly during lecture. I encourage you to experiment with color coding and find what works best for you to call attention to different elements within your notes. Next are some tips for successful studying. Really, you probably already know your own best style of studying, but the best advice I can give is to refer back to your notes. Now that we have established a good way to visually organize your notes with color coding, rely on those cues to help you study and return to the information. 
I prefer to keep my pages short so that I don't have to scroll so much when I'm studying or looking for that one equation. I keep track of any unfinished pages with a capital O at the beginning of the page title so that I know when I need to follow up with the professor on a question or review the solutions to a homework assignment or finish the page in some other way. On the topic of homework, I try to do most of mine digitally. Some professors do ask for hard copies, so I just do those on paper. But when we can submit a digital upload, I'll work through the problems on OneNote and then save the page as a PDF and boom, it's ready to submit. I will note that if it is on paper, I take pictures before turning the homework in and add them to OneNote. Oftentimes, graders can take a while to return assignments, but I want to be sure that I don't lose that important study material if there's a test coming up. Many of my professors will post solutions right after the due date, even if our graded assignment hasn't been returned, and in that way, I can immediately check my answers. Checking the solutions and understanding why you got certain problems wrong is so important to successful studying. As far as quizzes and exams go, preparation is key. I save practice exams the professors provide to OneNote and work through them, checking my answers against the solutions. I personally always make a study sheet to prepare for my exams. I will read through all of my notes in the lecture section for the upcoming exam, writing down important equations, vocab, and concepts as I go. I do this on paper because I like having the physical copy, and sometimes professors allow reference sheets and exams, but I always add it to OneNote once it's done. To conclude this section, I have a few tips on successful lab sessions. OneNote is a great tool for keeping track of all of your lab materials. From manuals, to scratch work and calculations, to notes from the TA explaining certain procedures or equations, I include it all. After finishing a lab, I will typically include a printout of my lab report in OneNote so that I can refer back to it without digging through my files and opening up Word. These old reports are very helpful in studying for lab finals or even exams in the lecture section. When it comes to OneNote and lab, keeping track of all of the work you put into these labs will really pay off. The last item that I will touch on today is a review of a few helpful features in OneNote that I haven't previously mentioned, but that are true lifesavers and really help me be so much more efficient and effective in my classes. These features aren't specific to engineering students, but I hope they can help you grow in your note-taking abilities. To start off, OneNote has powerful handwriting recognition built into it. Within the search bar, you can search the text across all your open notebooks or just on the current page to find keywords, but the true treasure is that it will also recognize your handwritten notes. I use this feature at least once a week and even more so when I am studying before an exam, and I have found it to be incredibly powerful and helpful. It's great because it recognizes even my half cursive, half print handwriting. This makes it so much easier to find tidbits of information on a certain topic that might have otherwise gotten lost in my notes. The next feature, and the main reason I use OneNote 2016 instead of the newest version, is the quick access toolbar up at the top. You can pin certain functions to this bar for easy access, and I really like this feature because I prefer to hide the main toolbar to give me extra room to view my pages. So keeping the tools I use constantly up at the top of the screen is super convenient. I barely ever click into the main toolbar now, as I have enough room to include all the most important tools I use up at the top. The last feature I'll mention today is the ability to link pages. With this tool, you can include a link to a page in another section or notebook without duplicating the page and needing to update both instances. You can also use it to link to a lecture page that is particularly relevant to a homework problem or concept. I don't use this too much, but it is super helpful when I do use it. That is it for this deep dive on digital note-taking for engineering and STEM students. If you've made it this far, a big thank you to you for sticking around and geeking out with me about this awesome and powerful tool. I hope you found this video informative and that you found at least one new idea that you can incorporate into your own note-taking strategy. Let me know in the comments down below which it is or what other strategies you use. Happy note-taking!